Hello and welcome. In this episode, we're going to be speaking about photo ideas. So it's quite a basic element, but how to get good photo ideas is something to think about, especially if you're following my Learn Photography series and how to get into photography. In the past few episodes, we've spoken about getting uh, your first camera, getting the right lens. So at this point, you should be in a place where you're ready to go. So you've got your camera, you've got your photos, but the next dilemma you're going to face is, what do I shoot? So today, I'm going to give you some great ideas to get you shooting things that you may think are basic, but actually those photos and how you get them will really help you in later life depending on which direction you take your photography so as a beginner photographer there's a brand new kit of essential photography gear you've got your camera you've charged your batteries hopefully you've got your lens so you're looking at options for shooting what are some good ideas so let's start with something simple how about going into your kitchen and getting a few selection of jars so for example you can use things like if you have jars with I don't know flour sugar those kind of things place them in a certain way think it to yourself that you're doing a shoot and out of those jars one of them is a client so say for example you've got sugar in one of them just throwing it out there so sugar is something that can be quite hard to show so that means you're going to have to take a photo of sugar it could either be let's picture it in our head so you've got a table you've got three jars and out of those three jars you've got two behind and one in front in the middle so like a triangle and the one in front is the one that contains sugar you spill some of that sugar out onto the table and that's a setup then you get your camera and start trying to expose for the sugar as it's white it'll be a good example to play with exposure and aperture so that's one idea i'll give you a few of these that's very simple so for example you can't have the excuse i don't have anything to shoot starting with something basic is good if you're not too into that and that's too boring uh, try selfies with a DSLR, so shooting yourself, putting it on the timer, or looking at reflections using a mirror, um, shadows. There's quite a few things you could do with it. Um, selfies, but not really selfies, because you're basically trying to get a photo of yourself that looks good. And that's something there. I'll give you a few more ideas. So if you go shopping, crowds, so basically people busy at their shopping day you can get a vantage point quite high up and take photos of crowds so that's something to think about i think so as you get into it you'll see your camera will get you some decent photos but out of those photos what is it that you think you can improve so if you were doing the first scenario where you are at home you'll find actually from closer to the window i get more light and then i can expose better if it's a second scenario and you're going out in the crowd and you're taking crowd photography, look for something interesting. So there's a street performer, for example. Try and get everybody busy in their own world going past and you're concentrating and focusing on the performer and getting a bit of motion blur. So that's something to think about. It's an idea more than anything else. Um, also, what you can do is there's other ideas. So you can use things like if you have incense sticks. You normally you burn them in the house to get a nice pleasant smell you can use that smoke to create funny kind of long exposures where you've got the heat from that um, incense stick and you're making movement to kind of maybe write your name or anything really but that would get you playing with low light because you'll have to expose for that but that's another kettle of fish i might do a link to another podcast for low light photography which will help you um, but there's loads of things out there you could try food I've seen quite a few videos online about if you have little characters like soldiers and things 
having those on your desk and then having food in the background so it's like a bit interesting because you've had like a massive potato for example or peas and you've got little characters so making like a story out of it but all these are designed to get you practicing and shooting um, and finding different techniques and finding your limitations so that's a few things if you're into your gardening you can go out into your garden take pictures of flowers and wildlife so little insects things like that which will get you into the close-up photography there's loads of other things there for example oily reflections so things like getting um, a bit of oil and water mixed up on maybe glass or mirror and then playing with that with shining light on it maybe with a flashlight or the lamp so that's a few options for you there are loads more but I'm hoping that gets you thinking a bit more creatively so something I did in the past was in the Christmas period you get loads of Christmas lights so if you have that in the background and they're blurred out so if I'm using actually you can use this as an example so if behind me there's light and you're exposed to me and focused on me the background will be blurry so that effect you get with the background bulker it's really good because it's stuff you can use for backgrounds on your computer or your mobile phone and it's satisfying knowing that you took that photo so that's something to think about or you can have something in the foreground which shows up the background blur more interestingly so for example I did one with a wine glass uh, quite forward up and then the lights were positioned in the way that it looked like this uh, they're pouring into the glass so getting a bit more ingenuity with your shots so that's a few options there are loads more you can play with if you're out and about one I found that was really good is moving vehicles or motorbikes you'll play with panning focus so you actually try and your aim is to match the speed of the car as it passes you so you want to get the car nice and sharp and everything else blurry when you nail it it looks really good the image is really interesting how it kind of stands out and it gives you an extra pop to the car or motorbike depending on what it is you're doing um, if you're in an area where there's loads of parties carnivals and fun fairs that's another one for low light because the natural light is really good if you have pets that's an easy win there you can take loads of pictures of animals and get better with portraiture and getting down to their level to get that photo and um, so that's a few different tips for different photo ideas and sometimes you know what the weather's like in the UK we have loads of extremes maybe use the weather as your gear so when I say gear I mean direction so you can if it's really cold try and get photos of fog because that tends to happen when it's cold or um, wildlife so animals running around depending on where you live that is quite um, location based and also towards town you'll see loads of graffiti that's a uh, quite a lot of people take photos of graffiti I think that's a bit straightforward but that's a challenge you can say to yourself I want to take a picture of graffiti that looks really interesting so that's getting a perspective that you've shot something that looks better than everybody else because everybody shoots photography um, and graffiti so there's a few ideas to get you thinking so now that you've got your camera and you're quite close to becoming um, more proficient using a camera because you've got your well if you followed our series you've got your introduction to photography you found your camera you found your lens and now you're looking at exploring lots of different photos so don't limit yourself take lots of photos to find where you excel what you like doing and then pursue that more and more and then on later episodes we'll discuss how to nail down a niche and find which direction you want to go so this photography series will continue and you'll be able to keep an eye on these videos and if you're new here make sure to check out the previous episodes so you know what I'm talking about because we've had a few build-ups to this session here uh, but it's been great for you to join me again and I'll catch you on the next one on the left is what YouTube thinks you should be watching and on the right is that playlist of our podcast videos make sure to subscribe so future notifications come directly to you